Hey, we're here with Clint Daggett. This is episode number two. Last week we talked about Thumper One and, and how they got started. Stay tuned. Hey, we're here again with Clint Daggett, Thumper, and Thumper number two. So last episode, we talked about you got fly, flown in, which was pretty unheard of considering, you know, nowadays a lot of drivers get flown in, but back in the day, you were still in high school and you were running a monster truck. Yep. Your dad was taking it and then flying you in to drive it. So tell us a little bit about number two and that experience. I mean, that was... Well, it's definitely a childhood that probably a lot of people didn't have or, or wish they had. A lot of people said, I wish I had it. Um, so yeah, it was definitely a different childhood. Um, like I said, I was still in school and I had to finish school. You know, I couldn't miss school. Uh, during the summer months was fine because I could travel with dad. In fact, we traveled three months out of the summer for a few years. And so I would fly in and drive the truck and fly home. And number two, like I said, I, nobody else ever drove it except for me. It was, the seat was all built for me, everything. You know, and I had to fly home and finish school, last year of school in 92. And um, dad had to finish out a, a show, and he never drove the truck. Hmm. I mean, he drove it around, you know, mm -hmm. like a parking lot and stuff like that, and but never over the cars. And um, he drove it. And, of course, these new suspension trucks, I'm sure, are the same way. But he never drove it. And he went up and did a car crush. And when it came down, he was like, he was waiting for the, yeah, the, 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 all that from number one because, you know, there is rough. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm surprised we all ain't got back trouble from them yeah. at our age and stuff and, and everything because, I mean, it was rough. I mean, mm -hmm. Thumper One, the bench seat, which was still in my 79 Street truck, the back of it was curved like this from yeah. bracing yourself. Yeah. And uh, so he, he was waiting for the, waiting for the, and he's like, come down. He's like, oh, my God, I can get back on the gas. Mm -hmm. and it was just a car crash or something. Mm -hmm. And um, and that was the first time he ever drove the second truck mm -hmm. as far as, like, in crushing cars or anything because okay. I was the only one. Okay. And um, like I said, I started, you know, 15, 15 and a half, and I was the only member approved from MTRA mm -hmm. um, to drive trucks. They all voted me in at an MTRA meeting, mm -hmm. whatever year that was. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was the youngest member to be an MTR member, too. Yeah, that's pretty wild. Now, your dad, was he pretty instrumental with the MTRA back in the day, too? Or did you guys well, just we join? Or? It, no, it was a good organization. I mean, we had to have some rules because, I mean, yeah. we were starting to racing and yeah. everything. And, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't want people going out. Go now, you, of course, you want to go out and crash your truck, you yeah. know. Yeah. Back then, you didn't want to because, I mean, these things were beautiful. Oh, yeah. You know, you're like, oh, you cried when you cried, when a yeah. hub fell off or something. Yeah. Like, oh, I got in the fender yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, MTRA was coming along because, you know, the trucks were getting faster and mm -hmm. we needed kill switches and mm -hmm. stuff like that, which we didn't have. You didn't yeah. have that because they yeah. were still show trucks at the time. Mm -hmm. and now, I, whatever happened to the number two truck? It got sold to Robert Gray, West Virginia Mountaineer. Okay. Um, he bought it, and he ended up selling it, and then he ended up getting a new style four-link mm -hmm. chassis. I don't know if it was a Dan Patrick truck or mm -hmm. what. Um, and he sold that, and uh, I think um, R.B. Muller runs West Virginia trucks now. Okay. And in fact, R.B. Muller has the second truck. Oh, really? Um, because Robert Gray went on a quest to find Thumper Number Two, okay. and Thumper Number Two traveled the United States, from what I heard, and Robert Gray found it not too far from where he lives. Um, I think it was in Virginia. He's out of West Virginia, so in Virginia or Ohio, mm -hmm. and some guy had it in a barn, hmm. and I think he had like a barbecue place or something. Okay. And it was painted still blue. And it had like stars and stuff on the hood they painted for American flag. Huh. Had a stock 460 in it. Robert went up to get it and it blew the motor on their way out to the trailer, I guess. Mm -hmm. Robert, because he says, I wanna, want wants to bring it back down to my dad mm -hmm. and totally redo it again. Okay. And Robert found it, brought it down to us. 
original tires, everything was still there. 66s really? still looked great. Uh -huh. um, and we blew the truck apart and got to rebuild it again. Really? And like I told my dad, I said, what is the chances of you building a truck? Mm -hmm. It goes and tours the United States. It comes back mm -hmm. to you. You get to rebuild it and nothing's changed on it. I mean, maybe a drive shaft loop or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And um, so oh. we totally redid it for Robert Gray, okay. painted his blue and everything. Um, I mean, took, you know, sandblasted, yeah. repainted it. And it's like every time Little Thump got done or sold and Robert come down and bought the truck the first time, I loaded all that in the trailer. <coughs> it's like I had to load them in the trailer, like the goodbye. Wow. And I'm uh, like, oh, man. And when it... When Robert come down to pick up it, when it was totally done, I loaded it in the trailer again. <laughs> but um, I don't know how long Robert kept it, um, but R.B. Moeller bought it from him, from what okay. I heard, and he okay. still he still has a truck. All right. So it's around wherever R.B. Moeller is out of, I guess, okay. Virginia or West Virginia. I don't know. Okay. Um, right. He has the truck. Okay. So Now, you said you had a street truck that has a lot of the first. Yeah, I had it. Oh, okay. I had it. In fact, I sold that. And then that truck sat for 13 years, and everybody in the air, because everybody knew our color green. Yeah. And Dad painted his motors yellow. Why? It was just something different. He didn't want to go with Ford Blue or anything. Mm -hmm. And everybody would ask us, what kind of motor's in that? Because it was yellow. Yeah. I mean, you had 460 on the side. Uh, everybody said, what kind of motor is that? And then we'd go 460 or 484. And I've never seen a yellow motor. But Dad always painted his motors yellow. Yeah. Just something different. And, uh, my, of course, Thumper One's motor was in that. It was painted yellow. But the truck sat for 13 years. Everybody in the area knew it, tried to buy it back. <coughs> and the guy had to move, and we ended up getting it and buying it back. And, in fact, we were in the process of redoing it when my father had passed. And okay. I had to let the truck go. It was mm -hmm. in too many pieces. It was going to cost two. It was probably 80% done. It was a rolling chassis. Uh, in fact, my father, uh, father painted it which he's never really painted too much mm -hmm. turned out pretty good mm -hmm. uh the only thing left was a cab to the you know redo and stuff mm -hmm. on it we're in the process because it had thumpers one doors on it because thumper okay. one's doors had uh shaven door handles okay and we we're in the process of putting it back to original door handles mm. so anyway um so some distance family got the truck and it's up in virginia i believe right now okay. that truck is but it was just an f-150 dana 44 it was nine inch rear mm -hmm. i built it out of my dad's original truck of a 78 F-150 standard transmission that he had. And um, no, that was like the, he bought new and stuff back in the day and everything. And that's how he got started because he raised it up. You know, you, you went from stock up to 35s, the 38s, and then the 44s and 40s and all that. And then it went back down to, it went back down to 33s as a street truck. Uh -huh. And stuff because, you know, it was playing in the mud back then and everything. And, mm -hmm. So, but I built that truck um, out, of, out of high school, uh, 92, and finished it. And like I say, it was my street truck and everything. Mm -hmm. But yeah, a lot of the parts, and all the parts are still on that truck. Okay. Like I said, that motor is still running today. Huh. And it sounds great. Wow. And all we did was just freshen it up. Wow. Even after all the years of racing with the blower and stuff on it. Mm -hmm. so. That's pretty cool. Now, what do you do now for a living? I haul heavy equipment. I've okay. done that for the last 30 some years. I've okay. worked on equipment, run heavy equipment, um, but we haul it. In fact, sure. uh, I work for a company that, you know, um, we do boring, road boring. So I haul all, everything they have. Mm -hmm. And my dad worked for a company and I work for his company also because they have nobody there to work mm -hmm. for either. Mm -hmm. Well, after his passing. So I'm working for two companies right now Okay. and everything. But yeah, all I've right. done that all my life after we got out of the trucks and everything because mm -hmm. dad got into it. Mm -hmm. In fact, we had a transport business hauling heavy equipment. Okay. That's when he got cancer the first time. So I had to come over and run the business mm -hmm. Why he was, because either he had to shut the business down because he just started it, yeah. or I had to come over and run it. So I had okay. to quit the company and come run the business for a while okay. until we shut it down and everything. So. All right. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Um, I know I sure did with Clint, getting to know him a little bit more about their story and and uh, please like and subscribe and, and uh, give us your comments. Thanks for watching.